Uh, I, I, I have trained in a seminary and my PhD is from Yale, so I have the religious side and I have the secular side. And it's interesting to compare and contrast to which I'm sure we've had discussions about this as well. Uh, from a secular perspective, people who don't believe in any, any religion, they're perturbed and intrigued by the Islamic stance on the crucifixion because it seems very bizarre and atypical. Like, why would an Arabian man 500 years after Jesus hold these views about crucifixion? Uh, and they don't really have a solid answer for that. The Quran... We didn't explain this. I, that's what I'm going to say right Surah now. Surah 4157. Exactly okay, all right, okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Quran says uh, that, do not say he was crucified. They neither killed him, they meaning the children of Israel, they neither killed him, nor crucified him, but rather, and this is really ambiguous, even in the Arabic, it was made to appear to them so. I just translated the Arabic. Yeah, what does that mean? It was made to appear to them so. Now, that's what the Quran says. Muslim exegetes, and this is not from the Quran, this is their interpretation. So, I don't consider their interpretation to be divine, but yes, we are sympathetic to it. I am sympathetic to it. Muslim exegetes have interpreted that Jesus was not crucified nor even placed on the cross, but rather that God saved him. Now this is an interpretation that is mainstream. And they claim, this is not from the Quran, as I said, this is from later Muslim historians and theologians. They claim that Judas, the traitor, was punished by God to resemble Jesus, so that when the Roman soldiers entered the garden, they saw Judas the traitor and they assumed him to be Jesus and they killed and crucified him and that's a befitting end to a traitor and so people assumed that Jesus had been crucified and that's what the Quran says it was made to appear to them so 